This past Wednesday, July the 1st, was Dominion Day in Canada, also known as Canada Day. Canada Day is a great time to celebrate this wonderful country of beauty, diversity, and freedom, and a day to reflect on our sense of belonging. The United Church of Canada, of which we are a part, has committed itself to becoming an intercultural church. Our church intentionally chose intercultural instead of multicultural to describe our vision of beloved community. Multiculturalism can be as simple as a celebration of food, fun, and festivals of different cultures while being relatively unchanged. Interculturalism, however, is a deep commitment to dialogue and shifting power among and between cultural groups, interactions, engagements, and transformation of, of all God's peoples. Therefore, today, and hopefully all throughout the year, we can rem remember our commitment to becoming an intercultural church with God's grace. Let's begin by singing our national anthem. For those tuning in from other countries, I hope you enjoy this moment of patriotism. We don't do it very often as Canadians. While Canadians rarely boast about it, we do think that we are living in one of the best countries in the world. What we are about to sing is the full English version of O Canada, written in 1889 by Robert Stanley Weir and Calexa Levelle, long before there was any thought of gender inclusiveness or political correctness. There is also a French and bilingual version. Normally, we only sing one verse. This morning, however, we're going to sing all four verses. The words are inspiring and are without any reference to war whatsoever. We. Yeah. 
are we in Canada? We are indigenous peoples who have walked these lands for thousands of years, Inuit, Mohawk, Cree, Hyada, Mi'kmaq, and over 600 more peoples. It is from our indigenous roots that we have been given the name for our country, Canada. Canada simply means village. We are also French, Black, British, European, Slavic, and Chinese people who have been here for a few hundred years. We are multitudes from all corners of God's world, such as Pakistan, Korea, Ghana, Chile, Syria, and so on. Where are we in Canada? We are in the streets, in our neighborhoods, in workplaces and schools, community centers and temples, mosques and churches. We are here in Rosin, Thomasburg, Albury, Rednersville, yet we are together. In our gathering, we acknowledge that Quinty is the traditional territory of the Anishabek and the Iroquois Confederacy, comprised of Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, Seneca, and Tuscarora nations. This territory is covered by the Williams and Upper Canada Treaties. Why have we gathered here for online and home worship? We are here to celebrate and give thanks for our cultural differences. We are here to praise God for the gifts of intercultural relationship and the desire to live joyfully and equitably with one another. We are here to worship. Thanks be to God. Hi. I'm Pam Holmes, the minister of Rednersville Albury Community Church on Rednersville Road in Caring Place, Ontario. And I'm Tom Holmes, the minister of the United Churches in Rosin and in Thomasburg. Once again, we encourage you to comment, like, and share. Each of these engagements make this post acceptable to more people. Again, I guess it's something like inviting a stranger to church, except you don't have to sit there and watch them fidget because they're bored to tears. Come to think of it, have you invited others to join us? If not, well, and if you have, well, keep it up. Christ charged us with the responsibility of sharing the good news of Christ with all whom we meet. We do so by our attitudes, our actions, our words. And now, because of a pandemic, which is still spreading throughout our world, by sending someone an email, a card, or giving them a phone call. Some of the material for today's service has been adapted from the United Church of Canada worship resources, including liturgy by the Reverend Wilson Gones, uh, Bergio Pastoral Charge, Bergio Newfoundland, and Labrador. The music in the service is either public domain or used by permission of one license number 400433-M all rights reserved. Thank you for joining with us and others as together we worship God and consider God's work in our lives. We're glad you have chosen to be with us today. No matter who you are, where you are, what you're going through or how you're managing to deal with our current circumstances, please know that you're most welcome. Some words of welcome based on Isaiah 41 and 42. You whom I have taken from the end of the earth and called from its furthest regions, and to whom I have said you are my children, I have chosen you and have not forgotten you. Behold, my people whom I uphold, my chosen ones in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon you. You will bring justice to the world. You will bring forth justice for truth. You will not fail or be discouraged till you have brought justice in the earth. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the world, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from prison. I am the Lord. That is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 
Let's pray. God of love, peace, and unity in, in diversity, we thank you for creating us and welcoming us just as we are, for seeing us equally as your children from all corners of the earth, and for giving us your familial blessings. We pray that you help us realize that we are all made in your image and called us as your family to bring peace to all your creation. God, creator of variety and differences, creator of hearts, minds, and bodies, you have called us into relationship with each other so that we can know you more fully. Help us see you in our neighbors, in those who are recognizable, and in those who are strangers. Creator of wholeness, help us learn to do more than celebrate differences. Help us to be transformed by the gifts of diversity to become the blessed community. We ask all this through Christ our brother. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to say, draw the circle wide. It's found in more voices, 145. And we're using it by permission of one license. Draw the circle wide. Draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. God is still a point of from Ezekiel for today. It's from chapter 34, verses 11 through 15. Rulers in the ancient Near East had long seen themselves as shepherds of their subjects. The prophet Ezekiel was sent by God to prophesy against Israel's kings who had misused their people and were scattering them. The kings had taken the plenty of the land for themselves rather than sharing it with their subjects. Written in a time of despondency when Judah had been invaded by Babylon around 586-87 BC, verses 1 through 10, which we're not going to read, blame the people's sorry state on the kings. Some people had dispersed around the Mediterranean. Others were deported to Babylon. Those left at home were no better off. In foreign lands, they have fallen prey to pagan beliefs. Rulers, too, are subject to God's law. Ezekiel insists they are individually responsible for the mess. Now, in today's reading, which Tom will do in a few minutes, God will reverse the evil done by the bad human shepherds, he says. He will seek out the sheep and rescue them from wherever they have been scattered. 
God will gather them and bring them back, restore them to Palestine. He will care for them. Ezekiel 34, 11 through 15. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As the shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all, from all places where they have been scattered on the day of clouds and darkness. I will gather, bring them out of the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all of the settlements of the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing lands. There, will, there they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend to my sheep <coughs> Excuse me, and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. And our second reading comes from... 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. And again, I'm going to introduce it before Tom reads the passage. For centuries, the temple of Jerusalem formed the center of the religion of ancient Israel. An impressive building set on Mount Zion, it was seen as a site of God's presence, where priests of the lineage of Aaron brought offerings to God in the name of the people. These animal and vegetable offerings expressed believers' desire to enter into fellowship with God, expressing their gratefulness by giving back to God something of what God had generously given to them. An early Christian leader writing to non-Jewish Christians borrowed these elements from the religion of old while at the same time transforming them. He made use of these elements to explain to his hearers hearers their new identity as disciples of Jesus Christ. Taking up words spoken by the prophet Hosea centuries earlier, the writing expresses God's forgiveness of his unfaithful people. The apostle affirms that his hearers are now part of the people that God chose, that God chose to be the primary witness to his love in the world. This is true not because of people's merits, but solely on account of God's compassion shown in tangible fashion by the coming of Christ for all. For Christians, the locus of the divine presence is not a geographical location or a building, but human beings. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a foundation in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now, to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who calls you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. Do you remember a few years ago when there was a commercial on TV where a man comes out on a stage wearing a plaid shirt and does a rant about being Canadian, he gets really excited and starts speaking and louder, speaking louder and louder until finally he's almost shouting. 
He says, a toque is a hat, a Chesterfield is a coach, and it's pronounced Z, not Z. My name is Joe, and I am Canadian. Well, that ad became very popular, I think, because it feels good to shout out our pride sometimes. Well, my name is Pam, and I am Canadian, and I'm proud of it too. Canada is a wonderful place to live. We are so blessed. And I believe that is that it is quite all right to once a year take the time to thank God that we live in a country like Canada. This Canadian does so every year on July 1st, just a few short days ago. It's the one day of the year when I am unashamedly patriotic patriotic and proudly proclaim my love of this country of Canada to which I belong. And please note, I said patriotic, not nationalistic. Nationalism is one nation lording it over other nations. It's the expression of national superiority that causes even good people to do evil things in the name of the motherland or fatherland, like Hitler. The common adage, my country, right or wrong, or even Canada first, are expressions of nationalism, even by people who would not otherwise think of themselves as being nationalistic. Patriotism is not nationalism because it doesn't denigrate other nations or claim to have any inherent superiority over them. Rather, one's country is simply one of many good countries throughout the world. But we love our country, and once in a while we stop and say so. Patriotism is simply the heartfelt love of country. On Canada Day, Canada Day, patriotism has its place. There are times when even we reserve Canadians need to celebrate our national heritage and say that for all the problems and difficulties in this nation, Canada remains one of the finest places on earth in which to live and raise a family. There is nothing wrong in being proud of being Canadian, thanking God that we live in the true North, strong and free. But at the same time, Canada and Canadians are far from perfect. For example, while we try to be multicultural as a nation and intercultural as a church, we oftentimes fail miserably at living out this ideal. That is why the reminder from Reverend Wilson Gluntz, some of whose material we have been adapting for this service, is important. Reverend Gonza had the following to say in regards to our scripture readings for today. He says this, and I'm quoting, We are called by God to belong to God's kingdom. God doesn't show any favoritism or segregation. The reading from Ezekiel 34 verses 11 through 15 shows that God gathers all people from every corner of the world to come home. Gonza continues, it doesn't matter who you are, your color, creed, or status. God wants to gather all people no matter where we are, even those who were scattered in diaspora. They are all called to come back home where they belong. And he says, we are called to restoration and reconciliation where we will have the rights as heirs and children of God. And then Gonsa explains, using a passage from Ephesians chapter 2, Paul, in his letter to the Ephesian writes, So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who were called the circumcision, a physical circumcision, made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by Christ. And that's in Ephesians 2, 11 through 13. 
Therefore, according to, to Gonza, no one should look down upon anyone due to their racial, racial, ethnic, or cultural background because we all belong to the Church of Christ. We are one people redeemed through Christ and called to fulfill God's mission in the world. Galatians 1, or excuse me, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. Gonza insists that we need to be reminded, using the words of 1 Peter 2, that we are all part of a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's own people. As Christians, our churches need to reflect that reality along with our nation. According to Reverend Gonza and our scriptures, Christians in Canada are not just Canadians, but we also belong to Christ, first of all, and our lives need to reflect that reality. Therefore, he states, my dear friend, we all belong to the church and to God. We are all here because this is our home and we belong. Amen. As Canadians, we all belong in our village called Canada. But as Christians who belong to God first and foremost, we should be in the forefront of celebrating not just multiculturalism, but interculturalism as well. We should be engaged in meaningful dialogue with those different than ourselves and enjoying the gifts and talents of every, everyone, regardless of race, race, ethnicity, culture, or heritage. We need to be intentional that all are welcome and represented within our churches, not just in the pews and at the table, but also in the leadership locally, regionally and nationally. Canada Day is a day to celebrate. Celebrate this wonderful country we are so blessed to live in. Celebrate the fact that we are striving to recognize our ideal that all truly feel at home here, that they belong in this country of ours. And celebrate knowing that while we are Canadian, even more than that, we are gods and created, loved, and able to love. Therefore, we belong in God's world and Christ's church, all of us, without exception. Thanks be to God. So now, let's listen to our Canadian national anthem being sung in 11 different languages. And there's a lot more that it could be sung in. Canada is very diverse. This, I believe, is much more in keeping with our intercultural and multicultural ideals. As we go to prayer this morning, and hopefully the rest of this week, let's be mindful of Roger and Barb 
of Lindsay and of Don of Redzersville, Albury, and of Lois and of Beth from Trinity, Roslyn, and of Don and Linda and of Marg from Thomasburg. In addition, let's not forget our political and medical leaders who are trying to contain this virus and restart the economy, those who are working to enable that to happen, and those who have lost friends and family to COVID-19. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for calling us to yourself from all corners of the world to come home, to belong in your church. We appreciate your love that embraces all of us. Lead us, we pray. We thank you that we are all one in you. We thank you for your faithfulness and justice. When we are aliens and foreigners, you welcomed us. Lead us, we pray. Faithful God, we thank you that we are known by you, and you have called us to go into the world, to live and to do your work with the mind of Christ. Lead us, we pray. You called us to love and be loved as we do justice in your field. Help us, we pray. We come in humility asking you to, to give us courage and wisdom to become ambassadors of your peace and reconciliation. Hear us, we pray. You made us like you and called us to be unique, yet you look at us and still see your image. Help us, we pray. We are glad to be your people as we all come together with one voice, answering and making a commitment that we will not keep quiet if there is injustice, but we will stand up and do your work of love, peace, and reconciliation. As you called us to be one, we commit our, recommit ourselves to this calling. We pray this in the name of the risen Christ, who breathes hope and peace into our fear, and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen. And now we're going to sing, O God of all the many lands, Voices United, 5 
forth as in the name of Christ. Fulfill your task as ambassadors and lead the world to justice and peace, one person at a time. Thanks be to God. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. Thank you for worshiping with us. Please join again next Sunday at 10 a.m. when we shall again gather for live worship. And don't forget to support your local congregations with your tithes, offerings, and gifts. Please like, comment, and share. And join us for our coffee time at 11.15 on Zoom if you are able. The link is on the Rednersville Albury Facebook page in another post. You can also Join by telephone. God bless.